So, as was said, Pampered Chef is where I got my start. Um, I actually grew up in a home where my mom sold Tupperware, so direct sale party plan was not a new concept to me. Uh, I actually went to parties with her, and you know what was really interesting? Is I got to see my mom wearing a different hat. You know, think about mom. She's the one that tells you to clean your room and to take a shower and, you know, go to school and don't be late and empty the dishwasher. And, and mom, when she was selling Tupperware, she was a whole different person. I loved it. She was this entrepreneur. She was contributing to the family. She was one of their top achievers as well when I was growing up. So when I fell, fell in love with Pampered Chef, is because I have a love for cooking, and I want to just tell you a little bit about the Pampered Chef story that you might not have heard before. So Doris Christopher, how many of you know Pampered Chef, know Doris Christopher, or at least have heard of her? No? Okay. Well, she was a young mom trying to contribute to her family as well. And she lives in Chicago. In Chicago, they have a great big mercantile. And there's an exchange uh, there at the mercantile exchange, but they also have a shop, this is kind of echoey, um, a cookware shop. And that little deep dish baker right there is made of stone. And she loves to cook. She went into the mercantile. It was near closing time. And she looked at this, you know, she's used to metal and glass baking pans. And she looked at this and thought, well, how do you use this? There were no instructions. It just talked about the material that it was made with, stone. And so she asked all of the clerks, how do you use this? And none of them knew. And they're getting anxious because it's closing time and they want, does anybody work at a place that closes and you're trying to kick the customers out? <laughs> so they were trying to do that with her. And finally the owner came up, or the manager, and said, lady, just take it home, experiment with it, bring it back on Monday, and you tell us how to use it. <laughs> and that's exactly what she did. She took that home and she fell in love with it. She made biscuits that didn't burn, they were nice and fluffy. Uh, she started going back to the mercantile and, and purchasing all different kinds of things that she had never seen before. And she would use that in her cooking and all of her friends would come over and they would like, oh, where'd you get this? And where'd you get this? And how did you do this? And you know, with her entrepreneurial spirit and had recently been to a Tupperware party and loved that model, she said, why not do this? Why not take cookware and use the direct sale model of Tupperware and go into my friend's home, just do a little demonstration and see what happens. And that's how it started for her. Um, and so it, it's just a great, great story. I love it. Any questions about Doris and her story? Okay. All right. Well, this is Jamberry. I heard somebody say, what's Jamberry? Jamberry are nail wraps. And so it's for fingers and toes, really fun nail wraps. Come on. When I was introduced to Jamberry, they were in a two-car garage behind an auto zone. And they were trying to convince me to give up my huge downline. This is, is this bothering you guys to hear it? Because it's echoing back into me. No? It is a little loud. And I'm kind of loud. So let's just turn this off and see if it works without it. Well, I don't know. It's not turning off for me now. All right. Can you still hear me? Can you still? Okay, perfect. I think I like that better. Okay, so this started in Orem behind a two-car garage in an auto, uh, behind an auto zone. And uh, it was really interesting because I walked in for an interview. They had called me, they had sought me out and said, we'd like you to be our business development director. It's a new startup company. I was interested. I'd been with Pampered Chef for 14 years. I knew that I could help a small company grow, but I didn't realize how small it was. It was the, the, the one on the red, the, the one in the red is Christy, her husband is the CEO, and uh, it was him, and he owns Blue House Skis, he's an entrepreneur by heart as well, Blue House Skis is a, a great company in Salt Lake, and so he's helping his wives with this sticker company for fingers and toes. And I'll tell you a little bit more, about more how that happened, but. I walk in for an interview, and here he is with his Blue House ski shirt and his hat, his cap on backwards and holy jeans, and I don't even think he's shaved, and we've got a little Ikea table with some folding chairs, and I'm thought, oh boy, yeah, I'm gonna leave Pampered Chef for this. But I couldn't get out of my mind. 
And you know that thing that just sticks in your gut? I don't know if you've had that experience yet, but you will. That thing that sticks in your gut and you just eat, drink, and sleep it. You just constantly are thinking about it. And when I said no at first, and then he approached me again and I said, yes, I'll give it a try. But let me tell you the story. The, the one on the right here is Lindsay. She's the youngest of the three sisters. She went to the salon and had an application uh, similar to what the Jamboree nail wraps are. And again, it's, it's applique for your fingers and toes, almost like a shrink wrap. And she came home after spending about $60 on this application, a young mom with a budget, feeling kind of guilty that she spent that money. And so she was talking to her sisters and they said, oh, certainly we can, we can do something like that. And then Adam walked through the door and Adam, don't you have a, like a, a vinyl sticker thing for your skis? Because you know, with the Blue House skis, as they're doing the aerial shots and everything, they've got all the sponsors on there. And he said, well, yeah, I could probably make something. And they started wearing those. Just They just wanted it for themselves. What they did was they searched online to see what, what they could find for a do-it-yourself. And they could not find anything, nothing. It was all, it all had to be applied by a salon. So they started wearing them. Their friends and family saw them and they fell in love with them. Where can I get these? Where can I get these? So at first they started doing it just to get some extra pocket change, maybe to go to lunch or some shoe money. And then it took off from there. When they had 80 consultants, and they did it through a Groupon. So they were selling the product through Groupon and on the, online. They collected, they captured all the email information from their customers. And so when they decided to take it direct sell party plan model, they emailed out all of their customers. And they said, you know, we're thinking about doing this. Is anybody interested to sign up to be our first consultants? And they had about 80 that said yes and signed up. Now what do you do with them? They didn't know what to do with them. So that's why they called me to develop all their training. And yes, in four years, we went from 80 to over 130,000 consultants selling over a half million dollars a day in stickers for fingers and toes. That's a pretty big success story, yeah. <laughs> it's not me. It's the <laughs> this product is made in the US. Um, Adam is just brilliant. I hope that he can have the opportunity to come speak with you one day. He just, he really is brilliant. And um, he, he knows how to manufacture and he, he knows about this industry and what he didn't know, he researched and found out. He worked, he didn't sleep. He would make these day and night. He was the only one. So he was in the back creating these wraps. The sisters would create the designs, tell him what they wanted to look like. He would go on the machines, create them. And then I was up in the front doing everything consultant facing. They're training, they're motivating, incentivizing, creating incentives for them to produce. And we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Any questions? About Jamberry, now you know the guys that were saying, what's Jamberry? Do you, do you know now? Okay, that's just right there in Linden, Utah. Yep, just eight minutes from my house. All right, so Jamberry, well, the second day I was with Jamberry, I created their commitment to charity program. As you heard, I have a degree in social work, and so it's, very, it's a passion of mine. Philanthropy is a, very, a huge passion of mine. So I noticed that Jamberry did not have a give back program. And so I created the Commitment to Charity program. And uh, just in July, we were donating uh, over $55,000 to the American Heart Association. That was just donations that we were able to do by selling the wrap. So we created a special wrap, a red wrap. The sales of that product, $2 for every wrap, went to this foundation. Now look at the total and just calculate in your head, $15 a wrap how many wraps we sold to be able to donate 55, over $55,000 to them in one month. Pretty amazing. Uh, we've been able to give over a half million dollars to autism awareness and different charities that, uh, through this program. And so this was really hard for me to leave Jamberry because of, of the philanthropy side of it and supporting um, nonprofits. And so that's actually what I did when I left is uh, went into nonprofit. But here's the thing. When you take a company from pretty much zero to 140,000 consultants, uh, other companies take notice. 
And so just about daily, I would have four or five headhunters calling and uh, job offers. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And just, whoops, it's the other, it's the other key. Um, just so you can see, in 2013, Jamberry was named the elite company of Entrepreneur for the Year. We won that, and that was the Rising Star Award for Entrepreneur of the Year. And there above me is Adam, who is brilliant. And uh, just this year, we, earned, we um, were honored to have the Ernest & Young Entrepreneur of the Year. So Adam was honored with that, and that was for new businesses. So just, just to show you what this little company from Linden, Utah expanded into, and again, remember the product, stickers for fingers and toes. So <laughs> problem for us is an opportunity. Uh, we'll talk about this as I go through how if you see a problem and you find a way around it, that's an opportunity for you to market that, to brand that, to, um, you know, uh, either it's a service or a good, and people who succeed see every problem as an opportunity. Again, I believe that. I keep going over to this keyboard. <laughs> Sorry, it's this one. So let me talk to you about the Now I Can Foundation. This also is in your backyard. This is in Provo. Uh, a friend of mine, Tracy, has a daughter with cerebral palsy. And she uh, tried to all different types of treatment to help her daughter walk. And as you know, cerebral palsy attacks the muscle system. I don't know if anybody here have a friend or family member with cerebral palsy or traumatic brain injury. And so you know the struggle that they have um, to walk. And so because no system worked here in the US that they could find, they actually went to Poland for about six weeks and took their daughter, their whole family, and uh, received some different kinds of treatment there. You'll see these. It looks like little braces with bungee cords. This helps to strengthen the muscles, and so there's physical therapy involved, and it's just, it's just really different. They also do the K-taping of the arms and legs. Um, she brought this back, and well, her daughter within three weeks was starting to walk. That's, that's the miracle. And her daughter now can get around. And I see these kids coming in that cannot even sit up on their own, and within about two weeks, three weeks, they're standing on their own with these little suits. And then they slowly loosen them as they, it's four hours of physical therapy every day. But to see, to see these children and their, the expression on their face when they can stand on their own without their walker, just amazing. And so I, don't, I can't even get into this <laughs> because um, we need to move forward, but this is just an incredible program. If you're looking for an internship, contact me. I, I would love to hook you up with the Now I Can Foundation. It's just, it's just a beautiful mission. Everything can be for grants. Uh, insurances don't pay for this therapy, and so what I'm doing is the, the fundraising aspect of this to get funds so that families can come and not have to pay out of pocket for this therapy. And it all, all over the world, all over the world they come for this therapy. So again, entrepreneur, not that she's making tons of money, but she's making a difference. And for me, that's my driver, making a difference. All right, let's talk about Willa. This is one of the companies that I'm with in New York. This is a company, this is a, a mom, Christy, who, uh, you know, at a young age, was using the proactive. She had heavy acne on her skin, and it actually bleached her skin and made it so thin that she was very sensitive to the sun. And at age 29, she found herself with skin cancer all along her jaw lines. And uh, you know, so as her daughter's rising up and getting acne, um, she is saying, "Put on sunscreen. Put on sunscreen." Anybody put sunscreen on your face? Does anyone wear sunscreen on your face? It's greasy, it's heavy, no one likes it. So Christy worked with some pharmacists and chemists and came up with a sunscreen that is not heavy. In fact, it feels like silk. And even though it was made for teenage skin, I wear it as my foundation because it has a little bit of tint and it gives you that sunscreen. And really you do feel like it's silk. So kids didn't mind putting on the sunscreen on their face. And look at her daughter's complexion, it's absolutely flawless and beautiful. 
And so I'm helping them because they decided, they, they've been in Target and other, other places like that. They decided to pull all their product from retail and go into the direct sale party plan model. model. And so that's why I'm flying out, in fact, next week to be with them for a week. I was on a conference call with them this morning, just helping them build out their compensation plan, their retention programs, their fast start rewards, their anything that motivates the, the consultant. Just to show you the opportunity here, remember there's over 130,000 consultants with Jamberry, and that's only a four-year company. This company is only four months old, and we have under 300 consultants in these areas. And, and you can see, if you know anybody in South Dakota or North Dakota, Nebraska, <laughs> let, let me know, because I would really like to get those uh, going. But uh, the opportunity is huge for growth, huge. Just to tell you, if you're into direct sell party plan or the MLM model, um, and they are different, you can ask me in quick Q&A if you want uh, why they're different, but uh, Texas and California, Florida and the Midwest usually will populate first no matter where the company is from. So this company is from back east. You can see that it's heavy in Connecticut because some of their friends. But Jamboree was from, uh, from Linden, Utah. We still have the biggest population of consultants in, te in Texas. So it's just, just so you know kind of where to market and brand to. <coughs> of course, you want to go all over, but. All right, Jim Rohn. Success is neither magical or mysterious. Success is the natural consequence of constantly applying the basic fundamentals. So what are the basic fundamentals? Anybody want to shout some out? Did I already put you in a coma? Cash is king. Cash is king? <laughs> I don't believe that, actually. <laughs> because I helped Jamboree grow without cash. They started without any seed money. They started with their $20,000 in savings. And we didn't pay for, we did organic reach. That's a big thing that I teach these startup companies is really how to get your name out there, get your brand out there without paying for a professional to do it for you. It's called an organic reach through social media. You can do it through Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook. In fact, uh, if, I don't know if you've ever been invited to a Facebook party of, for one of the direct sell companies, but I teach how to do Facebook parties um, how to do Pinterest parties, how to do Instagram parties. And so that's another thing. It's kind of my niche that I've created that no other person is doing. So companies want to, to know how to do that. Human behavior, we have a need to be right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this. We have a need to be right in our purchases. We purchase a product. Why? Because we think it's going to work, right? What happens when it doesn't work for us? Is it our fault? Is it our fault? Okay, let's take skincare. We just talked about skincare. So we have the skincare regimen, three-step acne program. Is it the product's fault or your fault in reality that it didn't work? Well, depends on the product, right? But more than likely, it is you not changing your behavior. It is you not changing what you are doing. So if you are needing to wash your face day and night now with this acne program, you may skip a day or two. And so you don't give the, the product a chance to work. But what do you say about the product? Ah, that didn't work, because you have to be right. So you purchased it, but you justify why it's not working. And it's not because you didn't use it correctly, it's because of the product itself. So again, I am not a graphic designer, so excuse the crazy little you know, thing that I've got going here, but let's talk about the consumption cycle for a moment. Let's talk about an acquisition of product or a service or for information. Why do you acquire a product? Because you're hopeful it'll make a difference in your life. You're hopeful it will work, right? So you've got this anticipation and you're waiting. Let's say again it's skincare and you just ordered it online and now you're waiting. So what could you do to help the consumer continue to be excited? Well, send them a thank you email automatically. Those can be automated. Send a thank you for your order. We see that with Amazon. We see that with other things. Um, keep that hopefulness going. Maybe even if it's a product that they're not used to using, a service or a product that they're not used to using, maybe a little tutorial while they're waiting, a little quick video. Um, whatever, you know, I mean, think about that de depending on what your product would be. Then the product is delivered. The product is delivered, it needs to have a wow factor. You need to open it and say, I'm still excited that I purchased this. 
I really am. And the product needs to be delivered on time. We were just talking about resourcing in China. What do we know about China? <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> yes, so they shut down in January. We didn't know that the first year in January. Even though that we make all of our products here, there are some things like a cuticle pusher or application kit that we would source in China and we promised this new product to be released in, and guess what, China closed down in, in uh, January. So we didn't allow for that. You do need to allow for that if you're resourcing out. Know that Milan also takes, uh, Italy, your, all of Europe takes time off as well. But the product is delivered and now we're excited. We unwrap it, it needs to have a wow factor. Maybe a little thank you card inside. Maybe a little reminder of how to use it. You know the stoneware that I showed you with Doris Christopher, uh, stoneware is weird. I mean, who uses stoneware? You use metal pans, right? And so she needed to have a way to, uh, to re-engage the consumer after their purchase. So when they get their product, they're excited to use it again. So what sh in every piece of stoneware, it's a little tutorial of how to use it, a use and care, along with some really great recipes to just get them excited. Um, so think about how your, when your product is delivered. Keep them excited if there's no wow factor they are more apt not to use it than to use it. And if they don't use it, then they're not going to be a brand advocate for you. So consumer um, consumption support. Again, it's a check-in to see how they're doing. This is what we teach the direct sell force is after you've uh, made a purchase or a consumer has made a purchase on your website to check in with them. Uh, with stoneware, we called it the out-of-box call. Did you get your stone out of the box or are you using it? but it's just a way to reconnect with that customer and get them excited. Then the consumption of product happens. If they do get it out of the box and they're using the product or service, it's the consumption. If this is changing their habit, if they're not used to washing their face at night, then send them a text. Hey, remember your Willow products or remember your, you know, find a way to automate this. Infusionsoft does a great job with these kind of things. Um, any questions before we get on to the rest? No? Okay. Consumption behavior is, again, what I was talking about. If the product didn't work, if you're not using it to how it's uh, designed to be used and you have a bad result, then you're not going to be a product advocate. In fact, you're going to have a negative experience and you're going to share that negative experience. So this is why it's so important to have a good experience. Even if the product didn't work for you, if you received support from the company, if you called the company and said, I want a refund, and they were, uh, helped you through the, the process, if you had a good experience with the company, then your need to be right is satisfied. You're justified. Whether the product worked or not, if you had that support from the consultant you purchased it from, the company you purchased it from, your need to be right is satisfied. It didn't work for me, but maybe it works for other people. And then the realization of benefits is really where the key is. So again, if it didn't work for me, it might work for somebody else. I'm still going to be a brand advocate because I like the company. And then you're successful. They'll be an advocate for you whether or not you, they are using the product. Believe me, there are so many brand advocates out there of Jamberry that are the male gender and they're not wearing the products, but they see the, the excitement that their wives have when they put on the nail wraps and they get noticed when they're you know, paying for the groceries or they're getting their big commission checks. Just to let you know, um, there are consultants in the direct sale party plan mo model, Jamberry included, that make on a consistent basis $30,000, $40,000, $70,000, $100,000 $100, a month. Just to tell you how this party plan model works is just incredible. That's why that when I showed the map, there's so much opportunity there. And I know I can help Willa do the same thing that Jamberry did. And it's a pleasure to send out those commission checks. Why? Because we know if they're happy, it's working for us as well. We benefit. It's a win-win. Working in direct sales, let me tell you there are five, if anybody's thinking about the direct sale party plan model, and this is where I'm an expert at, is that you need to reward five key behaviors. You need to reward the sales, the sales team to reward that there has to be some type of commission based on their sales, do this, get that. 
So if I sell $100, what's my commission? Is it 25%? Did I make $25? Instant gratification through sales. Uh, the next thing that you want to incentivize and reward is recruiting, building that sales force. So what I did for Jamboree in the early stages is I populated that map all the time. I showed where we didn't have a consultant. I would run a contest. I created a Jamboree community on Facebook. Hey, we don't have anybody in Hawaii. Wouldn't Jamboree look great on the toes of everyone in, in Hawaii walking through the sand? Who would be the first to get us a consultant in Hawaii uh, and then give a little incentive for that? So that's how I populated the US, is just by little incentives. But now you want to tag on as you mature and grow as a company, big recruiting incentives. So they start to build teams. And at this point, they're considered at the manager level. They're starting to build teams. They are not really at the leadership level. They're at the management level. So little baby steps along the career path. Little baby steps along um, for compensation. And then the fourth thing, so you need to incentivize that. And then being leaders, incentivize that. Have special perks. With Jamboree, we had executive retreats. We had leadership retreats that nobody else could go to. We had additional payouts, generational overrides, uh, team volume of the whole team, even if you had somebody break away. If you're not used to direct sales, this might all be kind of whew, for you. But. And then retention. Retention for the consultant. It costs you more to gain a consultant than to keep a consultant. And so make sure that you're providing training and support for them. Make sure the products go out so they're not embarrassed that they promised somebody that they would get the product in a week and it took three weeks. So be there for them and you'll have great retention. The same with a consumer product, taking care of them beyond the sell will uh, keep your, keep your um, a customer happy. Did you say five, five minutes left? I have 15. Um, just in closing, before I take some questions, because I did cover a lot, is everything you want is really on the other side of fear. And for me, taking that leap here, having this huge downline and big commission checks coming in with Pampered Chef, you know, being a top seller and a top recruiter in the company, you can imagine my <coughs> commission for doing part-time work, very much a full-time pay. Uh, to leave that, to walk into a two-car garage behind an auto zone in Orem and say yes to a sticker company for fingers and toes, just because I couldn't get it out of my head. It was just, I just felt it was right. And to be able to take it to that, to the level that, you know, my bonus check pays off my whole mortgage uh, in my, you know, uh, my, my monthly salary. Uh, it, I mean, it's just crazy, crazy. And then when you leave, you have the courage to leave when you know that you're leaving at the top to be able to make a difference through nonprofit and through other startups. So take that leap, that's where you grow and that's where you uh, learn the most is getting out of your comfort zone. So are you more committed to what you want or are you more committed to your fear? Again, do you have those million dollar dreams with a minimum wage effort or are you gonna really go for it? Roll up your sleeves, dive in and go for it. Let me give you my email address. I know that's kind of like, well, but if you have any questions uh, beyond this or if you want to network or Whatever, my email is, I'm gonna give you the nonprofit one, is jennifer at nowican.org. I think that that is a, a great message anyways, that now you can, jennifer at nowican.org. But, oh, okay, sure. All right, questions? Yes? <coughs> Yep. Um, what would be your suggestion to apply that to a very seasoned business? So, for example, my business, we have um, seven sales reps, and within a two week period of time, our lowest um, paid sales rep made like 100 bucks, and our highest made over $10,000. So, how, how would you apply that to you know, trying to keep everyone motivated? So do you have some type of community where they're uh, all together sharing ideas, um, what's working? Great. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of no cost things that you can do in that. Um, for your particular thing, it's fireworks, is that right? One of my girlfriends is involved in very seasonal, which is um, Halloween. So the big Halloween stores that pop up uh, just for a month or six weeks. 
And it is, it is a little bit tricky with the seasonal, for sure. The, the direct cells can be seasonal as well. The J months in direct cells are considered the death months of direct cells, January, June, and July, that, that you usually will take a dive. But keeping that group motivated, uh, incentivizing that group, um, sharing tips and tricks, just doing recognition is huge. So for Jamberry in the beginning, you know, it was important that we had them on that community page, that we were sharing the success stories, that we were reaching out, being there for them. If they only had a hundred dollar paycheck, uh, would they come back next year? Well, you got to decide, were they a good enough employee to really reach out to if, if that's all that they made? Maybe it's, it's better to fish and cut bait <laughs> and then go and continue to motivate the, the ones that are actually producing. In fact, when you're creating a compensation plan, some companies have a tendency to load it, load it in the early stages. And you do want to have a good compensation that's incentive for a dollar per hour proposition in the beginning, but really where you want to motivate are those business builders that walk away with the $1,000 checks, the $10,000 checks. That's really what you want to motivate. And so when you create a compensation plan, you create breakage along the way. Little carrots that some will go for and then not ha uh, hit, so you don't have to pay it out, that's called breakage. Some will go for it and really, really do get it. And that's a win-win for the company because it's, it produces more. But huge in community and supporting each other, maybe little badges of honor or certain titles. And yeah, that's what I would recommend. Yes? Okay, so just in your experience, you've worked with a lot of different companies that are multi-level yep. or direct sales. What types of companies work and what types of companies don't? What types of products work and what types of products don't? What, where do you, what kind of environment are you really looking to say this is a, a good opportunity for a direct sales? Here's my honest belief. I think okay. that any company su can succeed with just about any product, and because there is a consumer out there for just about any product. Now, if it's very scaled down to a specific niche that uh, you know is very limiting, uh, then that, that's going to be harder for you. But I don't believe that there are. I think any company can can succeed. Here's what I tell people in the direct sell party plan space: is I don't care if you're selling makeup or cookware or candles or jewelry, find what you're passionate about. That's the company you join. Because all of them have great compensation programs. But find what you're passionate about because that's who you are true and being authentic to yourself. And you'll be a, a higher, uh, have higher success if you find something that resonates with you. So um, I don't know if that really answered your question. but. Maybe you have a completely different opinion, but in my experience, that's my, that's my opinion. I've seen MLMs have one product, maybe it's a product that didn't even really work very well and they're selling subscriptions and, and they're doing really well. So it just depends on your branding, your marketing, and who that product resonates with. Yes? You know, you're going to find some of the mistakes along the way or some of the hang-ups along the way. With Jamberry, we had 60 and 70 percent growth for the first almost three years. And to keep up with that, we didn't hire enough people in the beginning. Uh, so we were understaffed, and I was putting in 70-hour work weeks. I don't even know if Adam slept. Uh, you know, we were all just rolling up our sleeves and getting going. So getting ahead of the curve by putting some programs in place would have been nice. Uh, we didn't have that luxury from that growth. Now Willa is growing at a smaller pace. They only have 300 consultants and they've been in business four months. I know we're going to really launch, but what I've been able to do is put those systems into place while we're slow and then help, you know, as we project the growth out. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Just be ahead of the curve. Yes. Okay, so there are different incentives incentivize different people. So if they're in for the long haul, 
big trip incentives. So we've taken them to Belize on cruise, uh, to, uh, they're going to Maui this year. So the, if they're in for the long haul, those kind of incentives work. If they're testing the waters, little tiny steps along the way, little carrots along the way. Maybe it's a water bottle, a logo, a sweatshirt, some swag, some pro business products. Uh, again, things that don't cost you any money, recognizing them in front of their peers for a job well done, having a, a badge of honor to be able to put on their website that they've completed a, a training series or that they are a director or a leader in the company. These things don't cost the company anything but really pull a lot of weight with the direct sell force. Yes? So for those direct sales, they're based out of uh, New York, like you said. How did you get Greenwich, Connecticut? Yeah, how did you get those sales out to the other states? Social media, baby. <laughs> Word of mouth, social media, yeah, all platforms. They have a really pathetic right now uh, Pinterest board that I'm, I just, we just have an intern now that will be working on that. Uh, but it's through social media. Some of them actually purchased the product in a, like a Target and then fell in love with the product and then when they pulled the product, they um, started searching online. So, yeah. Um, I helped you develop the Jamberry app and one of the things... You helped us develop an app? Yeah, Which one? The app. Oh, for the mobile phone? Yeah. So one of the things you can take a picture of your hands and yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering what your next big attraction, I guess, or your attention grabbing feature would be because that was like I think that was the different thing between other mail apps yeah. had that, but you kind of were able to switch them and try different mails and So the great thing about Jamberry nail wraps, and again I'm not with the company, I, I resigned in uh, the end of July. But they just launched into Australia, they're doing international expansion, but they're a very visual product, so they do well both in person and online. And we have a nail art studio where you can actually go in and create your own wraps. Um, and then with your app, then you could see how they look on your fingers or toes, uh, which would be really great. I think that that's a, a great move. I don't know if they are going running with that or not, again. Um, but uh, the nail art studio was a, a huge thing for us because we have a designer that would design 400 different products or designs for them, but then they could go in now and put their sports team or their sonogram. I can't tell you how many pictures of babies and sonograms are on women's fingers. <laughs> I guess they're just loading that right up there and making nail, nail wraps with that. But um, anyways, I, it's very visual. Uh, I think that that would be a great thing, but I can't speak for Jamboree at this point. So, yep. Congratulations, though. Yeah, nice. Okay, anything else? I hope something has been beneficial to you. Yes. Um, have you been involved with a company or an organization where you felt like it was time to call it quits? Or how do you, what's the evaluation process of, of personally of how you approach um, an organization where you say, like, Janberry um, was something that you felt like it was a success versus other things that, like, so there have been a lot of business opportunities that have approached me and again it's just like what I said I have to find a product that I believe in that has a story that I believe in um, that that I can really get behind and th where I can feel I can make the greatest impact so I'll do a review I'll analyze the company um, I'll just be honest, for me, the MLM way is not necessarily, I'm more of a party plan sales model. Uh, I feel very comfortable in that. And then it, just knowing that I can make an impact is what my driver. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>